Carry on, carry on. I had a question like, I'm an Indian and I aim to go to the USA after 10th or 12th or maybe after graduation. So which exam should I give? Or like, what procedure, what is the process I should go through to come to America? Um, so some exams you definitely want to take before 12th grade are the SAT, which is a test administered by the College Board. So you could just go on their website, make an account, and then you can take the test because they have uh, testing centers and then also the ACT. And if you do well on those tests, you can apply to colleges here and you'll be able to study in the United States. Yeah, and what's uh, the, the, the TOEFL exam I've heard of a lot, the TOEFL TOEFL? I have not heard of that oh, okay. exam. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Akshat. Good morning, my name is Akshat Shukla and I'm from Kanpur. So I want to uh, get an opportunity to work for Google in San Francisco. So for that, uh, I want to study in Pennsylvania Institute of Technology. So how to get there? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, uh, like I said before, you want to take the SAT and the ACT. And then I would also look at a lot of like international scholarships and stuff that the Pennsylvania Institute of Technology gives. And another school you might want to look into would be the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They're really, I think, I think you're talking about the same one because it's in the same state. But um, those schools, th that's a very good school. So if you pass that school and you get really good grades, you're basically guaranteed a job in engineering anywhere, especially in the United States. And so you're right now you you definitely want to take the SAT the ACT start studying and then I would make sure you have really good grades and then look for um, like scholarship opportunities which is when they give you grants so a school like the Massachusetts Institute of Technology could really like your um, application and your grades and your essays and then they will give you um, a scholarship so you could, you don't have to pay as much money to go to college. Thank so you. Definitely look into that. And then also make sure you start looking into essays because American schools really like having good essays. So like personal statements, something in your life that you've experienced that changed who you are or something along those lines. Thank you. Okay, next one. Yeah. Huh. Janvi. Hello. Hello. Hello, my name is Janvi. I am from Mumbai. Uh, I want to ask that what is the schooling system in USA? Studying so system. In, okay. So in the United States, um, you usually start off in kindergarten, which is like preschool. It's like, it's just like a small class where they just make you draw pictures and stuff. And yeah. then after that, you go to 12th grade. So K through 12 is what it is. So you go to school for typically 13 years. And there, so high school is like, what's the most important of your like education from K through 12. So in high school, they have a lot of opportunities for you to take college classes and apply to college. So America has lots of different colleges. There's hundreds of thousands of colleges. So you have to pick like the right one. Um, usually people try to go for the, the ones that are really competitive. So they're super smart people applying. So you have to be super smart and have really good grades and stuff. And um, after 12th grade is college where you major in something and then after that you could go to uh, any graduate school so like medical school law school or take get a master's degree a PhD stuff like that okay it is a little bit same in India little bit yeah ah, same same Janvi same 1 to 12th grade is there hmm. okay 
ओके आयुष पटेल सो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सो माय नेम इज आयुष पटेल एंड आई एम फ्रॉम जबलपुर एमपी इंडिया सो माय क्वेश्चन इज दैट हाउ यू कैन बिकम एन इंजीनियर इन यूएसए That's a good question. So, to become an engineer in the United States, um, for engineers, the most I would say important thing would be like high school. It's the same thing I told. I think it was Akshit, but um, so you're gonna want to make sure you apply to college in the United States. Take all of the tests that those colleges require. So go on their websites. Look at. what they're looking for make sure you get your essays written because those are very important when they select the students they want and then also um you're going to have to figure out which type of engineer you want to be so like aerospace computer software stuff like that and then you're going to want to major in that and if you want like a job at google or something you're probably going to have to go to like an advanced institute so something that's really competitive has like maybe a 6% acceptance rate or 10% just not like 80% if you want a job at Google but if like you go to a school that's like 80% acceptance rate you can still get a job but engineering is a very popular major in the United States but it's also very hard there's like a lot of people drop the major okay arnav hey Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Arnav. Oh, so my question was, uh, what's Arnav the from Arnav from where you are? So I'm from De- I'm from Delhi. Okay. Yeah. So my question was, uh, what's the difference between the level of education in in America and in uh, India? Like, what's the difference that you feel? Which one's easier, according to you? Um, I've never been to school. I've only been to like first grade in India. so i can't really tell you the difference um between how it's structured and stuff because i don't know too much about india's education system but i from what i've heard i think that um maybe the united states i think it's hard in its own ways because our like it's just our i feel like our college application process is a lot more difficult but maybe the schooling system in india could be harder like maybe in math but also in america it depends on which type of student you are because i can challenge myself as much as i want even if i'm in like 10th grade i can take like if even if i'm in like 8th grade i could take calculus because they let you move ahead so but if i don't want to i could just do grade level stuff so it really just depends on which what you want to do so like what type of student you are okay i also wanted to ask uh, one thing um what did you do to prepare for your sat or did you prepare for your sat yeah so i was supposed to take the sat in april but because of coronavirus it's pushed back to aug no september so even i don't even know if we're going to be able to take it but i'm still preparing um what i did was i got a book so it has practice questions that's the most important part of studying for any exam would be to know how it's structured what time you have and what types of questions they ask so first take like a practice test a full practice test time yourself and take that entire test then look over your mistakes carefully and then study what you missed or what you guessed on because even if you guessed you didn't really know it so after you do that the after you learn the material the most important thing is to do as many practice questions as you can uh, because um, amnit one question coming from one student is there any uniform in usa schools um it depends on the school when i went to cuz i went to a charter school like a punjabi charter school for a little bit and they had a uniform but like in my high school we don't have a uniform but in like my elementary school we did or if you go to a private school they have uniforms it just depends on the school okay kabi hello hello i am kavi kumar from tamil nadu india okay i want to ask that in this uh, whole pandemic 
covid 19 situation i came to know that uh, uh, that schools in usa were uh, were closed for a long time how you manage your studies by only uh, only online uh, online way in this uh, in this crucial grade i want to ask that um that's a good question so for the for my school at least we closed around like march 16th and my school went all the way to like i just ended school like may 29th i would say so right now i'm on summer vacation but those like couple months um we had like lots of homework and stuff but for me it depends on which program you're doing so i'm in a two year program where 11th grade and 12th grade are um like after i do both those grades then i take tests in all my subjects but a lot of students are in something called advanced placement where the testing is after one year so they had a lot of important tests they had to take um in may and the so they're all administered by the college board and that organization decided to make them all online so it gave you a really short amount of time to do a uh, free response question hey, is it so, true that american schools are uh, closed for a year um i don't think that's true they mm. are so for my district at least they're really looking into the situation because it's getting better but it's still not good so um they're thinking of making it half online half like in school like in person so maybe we'll take tests in person but like the schooling will be mostly online okay rekha are you are you comfortable with this of uh, uh <laughs> rekha hello good morning sir good morning Mom. hello uh actually i want to ask what are the features of your education system means uh, your education system is be, uh, focusing on what practical or rekha from where, which city you are calling the i am calling from shrinagar okay but i am from haryana okay carry on so um some features i guess of the american education system are that there's a lot of like group um like activities i guess so they have individual tests and like group tests too so for math um when i was in 10th grade we used to have after the teacher would teach the the chapter we would have a group test before so you get to work with people in your group and then afterwards after we review the group test we had an individual test where you after like if the teacher didn't make sense maybe during the group test you could understand stuff from like your peers and then you had an individual mm -hmm. test uh, how so, many how many subjects do you study in your school so um it depends really but most students study 7 to 8 subjects so i'm studying Eight, no, seven subjects right now. Which one? Seven. Um, so one is theory of knowledge, which is like a philosophy class, and it's about the theory of knowledge. So the different types of subjects and their origin—not their origins, but the um, yeah, but like the misconceptions in them and the connections between all the subjects and how knowledge is very important. It's it's like a philosophy class it's kind of boring sometimes but um then i'm studying calculus and then i have chemistry um spanish english and then history and uh, students i um, need to know little bit spanish we can ask yeah. her for some words in spanish okay next one rahul good morning sir good morning ma'am uh, good morning sir i am from punjab ludhiana okay i want to become a doctor yes. so what can i do where in india or in usa sir in usa and usa okay. okay so um to become a doctor in the united states first of all my mom is also from ludhiana but um <laughs> um so to become a doctor in the united states 
It really depends, but if you want to go straight to the United States, I guess the first thing would be to get an under, undergraduate degree, so like a bachelor's degree. Um, the process is really long and complicated, so I'll try to make it short. But so first is you get an undergraduate degree, something like biology, chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy, something like that. And then after that, after undergraduate, after you get your degree, actually in your third year, you usually take the test called the MCAT, which is the medical school entrance exam. And there, it's a really long test. It's eight hours long. It's, it's crazy. But you have to, it's everything you've learned for like the four years. And if you get a good score on that test, you can go to a medical school. And medical school is usually four years long. And during your medical school, you will have to take two licensing exams, which is called USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2. So you take those during the four years of med school, usually like the first, the second year you take Step 1, and then like the third or fourth you take Step 2. Then after you're done with medical school, you have to match into a residency program because during medical school, everybody's learning the same thing, even if you want to be a surgeon or if you want to be a primary care doctor, like somebody who takes care of kids who, gets, who get fevers. And so after that, you have to pick what you want to specialize in. So if I want to be an anesthesiologist, somebody who gives medicine to people in surgery, or if I want to be a surgeon, or if I want to be a pediatrician, so I have to pick. And usually the score you got on the USMLE step one really matters, but recently they made that exam pass or fail. So you either pass it or you fail it. So that makes it a lot easier to match into a residency program. And then after you start residency, it ranges from three to maybe like eight years, depending on what you wanna do. And in residency, you're not getting paid as much as a regular doctor does. You make about $50,000 a year which is like a teacher salary in the United States. And um, so when you're doing residency, you're going to want to, it's really long, first of all, and the hours you work are insane. So it's like 60 hours a week, sometimes it's 90. Um, so if you wanna be a neurosurgeon, you're probably going to be doing residency for eight years. But if you wanna be something like a primary care doctor, then it'll probably take only three years. And then after that, there, you could do something called a fellowship, which you could specialize in more. So I could be a, like a doctor for kids, but a doctor of kids' lungs or something like that. And then you get licensed and then you're finally a doctor that gets the full salary of a doctor. Okay, so it's yeah. really long. Uh, it's uh, very long in India also. Very long okay. process. <laughs> Ashish. Ashish Thomas. Hello, sir. Good. Uh, hello, ma'am. Good. Uh, good morning. Mm. Carry on. Good morning. I want to ask, what is the daily routine of a student in USC? Ashish, you are. Uh, you are. I am from, from Mysore, Karnataka. Mysore, Karnataka. Okay. So, are you asking like in online school or no, no, no. in actual no. school? Actually, what actual is the routine school. of students uh, in USA? What are you doing a whole day when your schools are on? Okay, so um, when schools are on, you school my school starts at 7.45 in the morning, so usually I have to wake up at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock. Then, you know, you eat breakfast, get ready. Then you go to school. Um, school is broken down into different periods. So for me, I have four classes a day, but I'm studying seven subjects. So one day I have four classes, they called them blue days and gold days. So on Mondays, I'll have my blue day classes. On Tuesdays, I'll have my gold day. Then on Wednesday, I'll have my blue day again. And then on Thursday, I'll have my gold day and so forth. So it's really broken down. So I get two days to do my homework because my class is every other day, but you still have to stay on top of it. So I have my eight classes. But since I'm only taking seven, most people only take like seven. So then they can either take the period off and go home early, or you can take a study hall, or you could take like a fun class like art. So, or like art or building stuff. 
there's or like ceramics where you make pots it's so there's lots of options and then um after that most kids have clubs or sports they do so the school day usually ends at around 2 45 um, but I'm in, for example, I'm in cross country, which is like long distance running. So my school day will, so I have practices in the fall till like 5.30. So I come home at like 5.30 and then I do my homework and then I go to sleep. And then I wake up in the morning and it's over again. Kushal, Kushal Bharti. Hello sir, good morning. Good morning. My name is Kushal Bharti and I'm from Delhi. I want to ask if I want to become a software engineer, so uh, what exam I should give? But, but uh, um, you have to complete the engineering first, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, Actually, have, we, have, yeah. we have covered this question so far. Pradipta. Pradipta Kaur. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Pradipta Kaur from Mumbai. So I have a question that I want to become a professor in USA. So what are the degrees that I should pursue for that? So, so if you want to be a professor, the first thing you need to know is what you want to be a professor in. So do you want to be a history professor, a biology professor, uh, yeah, I want to be a history professor. So Okay. So usually um, you need to specialize even further than that. So I actually took uh, a college level history class this year. Um, it was about like you, modern United States history. So you have to be really specific. So you can't just teach like general history. It has to be like American history, European history history of witches or something like that because that same teacher also taught that class um or you could talk about like indian history something like that that you really want to study in most professors i would say have at least a master's degree so you're gonna want to major in history i guess and then in your get a bachelor's degree in history which will take four years and then after that, you're gonna have to do a master's degree, most likely, which will take two, and then possibly a PhD if you wanna be more renowned and stuff. And then usually if you're a professor, you also have to publish papers, do research, stuff like that. Thank you. And uh, the last question of this session, Tanvir. Tanvir. Okay, Dipali. Uh, good morning, sir. Mm. Hola, senorita Amanita. I'm also learning Hello. Spanish in India through online sources. And I wanted to ask, like, uh, it is easy to see in percentage how many people speak Spanish, but is it common in the United States to, if you go out on a road and start speaking Spanish, do you get people who are going to interact with you? Um... I mean, Dipali from uh, one, one question more. Dipali from uh, where you are? Uh, I'm from Delhi. Okay, carry on. So, um, it, it, I, there's like the United States is really diverse. So you're going to meet a lot of like actual fluent Spanish speaking people. So like if I lived in California, if I did that more, more than likely I would. But I live in like Colorado, which is like generally white people. So most likely I wouldn't like from where I live but maybe if I went like in a more populated city I could find somebody who speaks Spanish but that like can a lot both, of people in the United States states speak Spanish can you both speak Spanish for us some words uh, sir I know some words actually I've uh, heard online sources okay <laughs> like how we how they can say hello hola Hola, ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Yeah, that's hi. How are you? Yo soy bien. ¿Y tú? Yeah, muy bien. Gracias. Okay, that's a very good session. And in the coming days, we can conduct this type of sessions, uh, more sessions. Thank you, Amanit.
okay yeah. and thank and thank you student be ready with your questions in the next classes we can take many more topics okay hernanjit you left the questions i am give you the opportunity okay we can take the questions in the next session okay thank you all students have a nice day thank you avnit yeah i am going to end the meeting